Hey everyone, welcome back to another video in which we'll be discussing about SEO for React developers. SEO is a big thing if you're a blogger, if you're someone who's trying to run a small site and want to get organic traffic. This is one of the best ways to get traffic in today's world by ranking on keywords on Google, right? Which are high traffic or medium traffic with low competition. But SEO is especially bad if you are using a front end technology like React. And there are reasons for that and there are fixes for that. Let's take a look at that. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. It's basically, you know, keyword ranking and stuff on Google. When you write, for example, when you write, how do I learn React? The first few results are from React.js documentation. Why? Because they have a good SEO, they have a good authority, and Google knows that this is a good resource. How does Google know that? Google knows that from a multiple list of factors but one of the factors one of the few things in those in that big list is your on-page html how the meta tags look like how the things how the stuff looks like on your source code of your website so required seo data checklist this is not an exhaustive list but the most common and popular things which all the sites include which wants to rank on ht on google are title description Keywords inside meta description, all tags, heading tags on pages, canonical tag, open graph information. Open graph information actually helps you also have a stronger reputation on social media. When your blog post or when your website is shared, you see those nice little cards of information automatically pop up. All right, so why is SEO bad for us as front-end developers? This is because React is bad. And actually React is bad because JavaScript is bad. And JavaScript is bad because JavaScript constructs DOM on the runtime, right? So that means when you're loading a page for the first time, we'll see a quick example. JavaScript executes in the browser and then creates the layout of the page. However, search engines prefer that if you have your content already included inside your HTML response, which does not happen. There are a couple of reasons why search engines prefer you to include your content within HTML. The first one is a search engine crawler spends so much time on crawling so much different pages, right? So a search engine crawler does not really have time to download your page, execute JavaScript, wait for the code execution to complete, wait for the async calls and everything to happen, and then parse your result. That just seems like a stupid idea to a search engine crawler. Why should they spend so much time on your website. And number two is that because these single page application frameworks are pretty new if you think about it. Most of the web still uses traditional technology, traditional stuff. So a lot of things are already available, were already available from, you know, from since the web has started, it has always been the convention that HTML will be served um, as the first thing, which includes a bunch of content about what the page would be looking like. Now, search engines like Google actually tell that they will go ahead and download the JavaScript code and execute it and make sure that the SEO is somewhat maintained for React code bases as well. And in general, any code base which uses JavaScript to construct the UI, but with a big but, <laughs> technically speaking, you should not rely on JavaScript based SEO because Google says that, you know, we will not do it immediately we might just add your website to queue and it'll happen later down the line you'll get bad seo because it is delayed and you'll get you know delayed page updates in search results and everything would be delayed for you so it's best you figure out a way to get that content within your html source code so first of all let's just see a couple of ways we can fix this the first way to fix this is actually pre-render pages and by pre-rendering what i mean is that you kind of render the final output of the page inside HTML doc and only show it to the Google bot. What does that mean? Let's take a look at this example. I'm gonna open this code damn playground in React real quick. And you'll see that we actually use a snowpack build, which is similar to create React tab. But what you're gonna see is that if I open this in a new tab, once our React application is ready, if I go ahead and open this in a new tab, you'll see that if I go to the view source, we pretty much have just some Snowpack custom script and that is it. This is all just JavaScript, right? We don't really see, you don't really see that H1 um, 
tag of edit src react to save and reload you know if i try to find this this is nowhere to be found right so if you even go ahead and write some meta tags or you know try to write some stuff you will not see it in your source code and on production it might it might very well be just a couple of lines which just includes some javascript that's it so what you want to do is instead of this appearing as your source code you want google to actually see this right here inside your html elements because you can see here you have uh, the javascript available to you so what sites like pre-render do is that they will go ahead and visit every single page on your application on your web page url and they will go to your html tag they'll do something like inner html like this you know including the html tag as well they'll copy this and they'll store it as a .html file and they will configure that whenever google bot visits your website they will actually sit in the middle of your website and the internet so whenever google bot visits your website instead of serving you instead of serving the google bot an actual website they're going to serve this generated html to them right and how do they do that they do that by inspecting the user agent property here google bot follows a you know has a specific user user agent which it uses and pre-render captures that user agent checks if it is a google bot or bing bot or whatever it is and accordingly acts like that so it will act like a proxy which directs the traffic to pre-rendered pages if it is a google bot and if it's not a google bot if it's a human then you get a regular website this kind of seems hacky and it in a sense it is but it works right if you have a got a massive website which has hundreds and thousands of uh, react pages written and you want to get on the seo track the next day this is unfortunately the way to go about and these are some of the valid points which websites like pre-render bring so you can go ahead and use an existing site like pre-render.io or you can also use some npm packages which provide this functionality self-hosted out of the box and i'm going to leave those links to these packages in the description so you can check them out the second solution is of course server-side rendering it's truly the best the only defect in this is might be challenging to migrate and why that is that is because like i said if you have thousands of pages you might have a different structure you might have a different architecture and if you're trying to move it on next chase for example you might get stuck um, because of certain coding practices you have been following right because next uh, demands you to follow a lot of file name conventions and configurations and stuff like that but if you can get this done this is the truly best thing um, for seo my personal opinion is never use pre-rendering if you're starting a new project never use pre-rendering pre-rendering is only there because for big websites this might be a pain for new projects or even for smaller to mid-sized projects which can be migrated to frameworks like next.js you should do that next.js is a super popular super super duper framework out there which can help you with seo performance you name it it'll help you with that and you can also get a lot of free hosting on sites like Wurzel and netlify and things like these so the solutions are cheaper it's 99 percent compatible you know it's 95 percent just react next year's is almost like react except for a few things which superpower it and you get free seo and free um you know performance out of it as well so my 100 percent opinion is to use next.js for any future react projects which you want seo ready and if you want you can convert your existing projects to next.js as well so that is all for this video i hope you like this if you did like please make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video by pressing thumbs up below that really helps the channel and yeah that's pretty much it for this video please share your experiences as well in the comments below share it with your friends who need seo guidance i hope you understood and learned something new thank you all for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next video